Okay, so I guess you can always push pause and re read this entire screen if you want to, but uh, it's up to you. I'm just going to read it really quickly. Um, remember, we're solving problems involving quadratic relations. Uh, some of these problems will come from re real life stuff. So uh, it says, before we begin, recall that the maximum or minimum of a parabola is the value of y. Look at the parabolas a and b below. Find the maximum or minimum. So look down here with me. Here's parabola a right here. What's the minimum? Now, I just said the answer, but there is a minimum here, and you should know that by now. We're, we've been doing parabolas for a long time. So it's actually kind of hard to read, but I'm just going to assume that these all go by 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So I would say the minimum of this parabola A is y equals negative 4. Okay? And how about this one? Parabola B. It has a maximum. And the maximum of this parabola is y equals 1. Actually, it's slightly above that 1, but let's just pretend. Let's pretend that it's just touching the 1, just to keep things easy. You could say 1.1 or 1.2 if you really wanted to. Okay, so all of that stuff you know. Now, parabolas, I'm reading again here, parabolas are symmetrical. Okay, that means they're the same on each side, just like a butterfly, hopefully. A, ver a vertical line drawn through the vertex is called the axis of symmetry. Now, there is a new word, okay, axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is the same as the x-coordinate of the vertex. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take this line right here. I'm going to show you. It's a vertical line, an axis of symmetry. Let's go to parabola A, and I'm going to show you where the axis of symmetry should go. Right there. It cuts this thing perfectly in half. It cuts a parabola so that it's perfectly in half. Whoops. I was going to stretch it and make it a little longer. Oh, there we go. Eh, you can say it goes forever up and down. But anyway, the axis of symmetry in this case is just uh, look over here and I'm going to use a pen actually. Let's use a, I don't know, a black. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. That right there is at x equals six. That is where this axis of symmetry is happening. Okay? So the axis of symmetry over here you would write is x equals six. Okay? And we already found before the maximum or minimum value is y equals, we already found that this one was negative 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 4. Okay? And just before we move on, think about this. The axis of symmetry is x equals 6, and the, the minimum of this is negative 4. So this spot here is actually 6 as you go 6 across to get to the vertex. I shouldn't have said this spot. This vertex right here is 6 and negative 4. Okay? So the really important part is that the axis of symmetry is this value right here, the x value of our vertex. The vertex and the axis of symmetry have something in common, and it's that 6. Okay? Let's try this with another axis of symmetry. Let's drag one over here. Here it comes right through right through the middle of this parabola and I make it a little longer there we go and if we look closely if we look closely where is this thing cutting through negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 okay so it's cutting through at negative 3 right there now remember our vertex is basically at negative 3 as well because that's the x value and the maximum you told me before was 1. So negative 3 and 1 is our vertex. So the important thing to take with us here is that the axis of symmetry and the x value of our vertex are the same thing. Okay? Axis of symmetry, negative 3, maximum or minimum is 1. Okay? Please remember that as we carry on here. Okay. So if you know the zeros, or the x-intercepts, of a quadratic relation, or a parabola, you can find the axis of symmetry. Okay? You don't need this graph. 
you don't actually need this graph to find the axis of symmetry. Watch. Okay, we got this spot right here. That's one of our zeros. And here's the other spot. Where are these two spots at? Well, this one's at 2. And this one over here is 1, 2, 3, 4. It's at negative 4. Okay? So, wouldn't you agree that the vertex down here and the axis of symmetry... Here, I'll, here I'll draw in a nice line to show you the axis of symmetry. Here we go. There. Wouldn't you agree that the axis of symmetry is exactly between... It's always going to be exactly between these two points. Can you see how it's right in the middle? Well, let's pretend we didn't have a graph and all we had was negative 4 and we had 2. How could we find the number that's between these two? Do you remember? Well, it's the same thing. It's like finding an average, okay? So what you do is you add up the numbers. So you add up your two x-intercepts or your two zeros. Okay, so you add up the two x-intercepts. I like calling them x-intercepts, actually. And what is that? What's negative 4 plus 2? That's right, it's negative 2. And if you remember correctly, to cut something in half, you just uh, divide by 2. Okay? Negative 2 divided by 2 is what? It's negative 1. Let's see if that spot is where the axis of symmetry is. Come with me over here. Here's 0, here's negative 1. Look at that. So, at this spot right here, that's our axis of symmetry. Okay? And, sorry, I just had a student come in there and uh, lost my train of thought, so I'm just going to... Okay, so basically we just found that the negative 1 is indeed our axis of symmetry, x equals negative 1. And that also means that this vertex right here is the the x value is negative 1. The y the y value or the minimum is 6 7 8 9. It's negative 9. Okay? Now, we're going to try and do these questions without um, a graph, okay? So it's going to be a little bit trickier, but not too bad. And that's why it says, why do we do this? because the axis of symmetry is the x value of the vertex and that will help us find the maximum or minimum as you will see so we're gonna do this in the next page okay here we have an equation there is no graph here whatsoever just an equation okay do you want a different color this time let's try some blue okay find the zeros or find the x-intercepts well you got good at this in the past couple videos there's two x-intercepts here be careful, they're not negative 4 and negative 2. They're the opposite of negative 4 and negative 2. So the x-intercept is actually 4, and the other x-intercept is 2. Okay, those are the two of them. It's that quick. Those are the zeros. You could write them like this if you wanted. 4, 0, and you could go 2, 0. Because the x-intercept is always, the y-value is always 0 for an x-intercept. Okay, the next part. Find the equation of the axis of symmetry. Well, if you remember correctly, if we take this one and this one and find the middle between 4 and 2, the exact middle, I'm going to put the small number first, 2 plus 4, that equals 6. And then if you cut that in half, divide by 2, you end up getting 3. So what is the axis of symmetry? The axis of symmetry is x equals 3. Okay, that is our axis of symmetry. We're not even looking at a graph and we're able to answer this. Okay, the last part of this question... I'm going to leave myself a little more room here. Okay, it says determine the maximum or minimum value. They want to know the y value. Well, how can you do this without looking at the graph? Well, this is what you do. You know that x is 3, right? So what you do is you say, okay, well, sub that 3 back in. So instead of, I'm sorry, sub the 3 back in where you see the x up here. So instead of an x, you put a 3 minus 4 just subbing this back in in the equation. Okay? At the top you see an x minus 2. Well, don't put an x like I just about did there. 
put a 3 minus 2. I don't like how it... Uh, 3 minus 2. There we go. And let's scroll down here. So, not a lot of room. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. 3 minus 2 is 1. So the y value here, what's negative 1 times 1? Negative 1. This, I should really have a y equals here. This is our, I guess you could say that we're talking about a minimum value of negative 1 here. The reason why I say minimum is because this graph, as you can see, is positive, so that means it opens upwards. It has to have a minimum. So I'm saying the minimum value of this graph is y equals negative 1. Okay, so now you know the x value of the vertex. Sub it in to find the y. Well, that's what we just did. We subbed it in to find y. So here's the vertex. That should have been part d. What is the vertex? Well, when x is 3, as we saw right here, y is negative 1. There's our vertex. That's a very important part of a parabola right there. Okay? Okay. So two questions here, folks. Two questions that are word problems. All right? We're going to do them. Here we go. It says the length of a rectangle, here's our rectangle, is 5 centimeters greater than the width. Okay, let's just stop right there. This is a situation where they're not going to tell us a lot of information. They want us to figure things out. So they haven't told us how long the width is. So what, what would be a good letter for width? Can you see what I'm doing? A W. Okay. What about the length? It says the length is 5 centimeters greater or longer than the width. Well, we don't know what the length is. We don't know what this length is right here. So it says it's 5 centimeters longer. So we're going to go f W plus 5. The width plus 5 is the length. And the width is just W. Okay? Let's keep reading now. If the area is 300 centimeters squared, remember they're using area here, what are the dimensions of this picture? They want to know what is the length and what is the width of this picture for real. Believe it or not, we can figure this out using quadratics, your knowledge of quadratics. Okay, now, do you remember this? The area of a rectangle is just length times width. Okay, area is just length times width. So let's do that here. The area we know is 300. Okay, what's the length? Well, the length is w plus 5, and the width is just w. Okay, so now what we can do is expand this. Okay, just expand this. So w times w is w squared. Surprise, surprise, we have a quadratic here. We see the little 2 there, remember? Okay, and w times 5 is just, we just write it 5w. Okay, and I'm going to change this around, make it into a quadratic by getting this 300 over on this side. I'm going to subtract 300 from both sides. Okay, so what that does is it gives us w squared plus 5w minus 300. Okay, at this point, it's a big number. 300 is a big point. I mean, a, a big number. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to factor this. You remember, w goes right here and right here. Now, as far as the negative 300, we have to think of two numbers that times to make 300 and add up to make 5. Okay? To save you some time, and because this is a video, I'm going to do it a little quicker. I'm going to tell you that 15 times 20, I used my calculator and I just tried it out for a while, 15 tw times 20 will give you 300. Okay? We want them, it's 5 between them, right? But we want the 5 to be positive. So we've got to make the 20 positive, because 20 and then minus 15. 20 minus 15 is positive 5. And if you multiply these, you end up getting the 300 we were looking for. Okay, so what are the two x-intercepts here now? Because what we could do is we could figure out what w is. Okay, 
So let's figure out what the x-intercepts are, in this case the w-intercepts are. So w could be either 15, so w is either 15, or if you look over here, w is negative 20. Okay. Now first of all, if you look back up here, is the width going to be 15 or negative 20? Well guess what? It's impossible it is impossible to have a negative length of something, okay? Length is always positive. So in this case, one of our answers didn't make sense. In math, sometimes they call that an extraneous answer. It just means that it doesn't make sense. The answer that we really need, the, the answer that's useful here, is this 15, okay? So the width is 15, all right? That's a big answer there. The width is 15. What's the length going to be? Well, the length is w plus 5, or 15 plus 5, which will give us 20. Okay? So the dimensions of the picture is it is a 15 by 20 picture. And you can verify that. 15 times 20 happens to be 300. Okay? You could have stopped earlier if you'd wanted to when we were doing that factoring up there and just say, well, I kind of know what it is because it works perfectly here. That would have been okay, and there's nothing wrong with that, but um, we carried it through to the end and we got the answer. Okay? So 15 by 20, and don't forget to say centimeters. So 15 centimeters by 20 centimeters. Okay. Next question. This one's a little more exciting. I don't know if it's true or not, but here it is. In 2005, a skateboarder jumped over the Great Wall of China. Wow. Could that be true? I don't know. His path was modeled by this equation. Pretty, pretty long equation there. It's got lots of decimals. Where h is the height in meters above the wall, and d was the distance away from the takeoff ramp. Okay, so the first question, it says factor the relation. Well, you know how to factor something like this. You look at it and you say, hmm, I'm going to get rid of this part. Do you remember how to get rid of it? You divide everything by this. Okay, so let's do that. Negative 0 0.05. Factor that out. And notice, don't stop there, notice that there's a d here. There's actually two d's. It's d times d, or d squared. And over here is just another d. So factor out a d as well. Okay, because both of them could offer a d here. And let's see what's left over. Well, if you take this divided by this, you get just d. Okay, this times this will give you negative 0.05d squared. So you just this is just d. Then we have 1.1 divided by this. So let's do that on my calculator. 1.1 divided by 0 0.05 and you get 22. Now be careful with the sign. It is going to be a negative. Okay? Because this times this will give us 1.1d, positive 1.1d. We need two negatives to make the positive. Okay, we have just factored this thing. I guess we could put the h in the front if we wanted. We have just factored this. So what good is that? Well, let's keep going. There is good to it, trust me. Use the factored form, which what we is just what we did, to determine the distance between his takeoff and his landing. Okay, all that really means here is what are the zeros here? Where are the places where this parabola um, cuts through the x-axis? Well, look back up at our equation. What would d have to be right here in order for all of this to be 0? d would have to be 0, because 0 times anything is just 0. But there's two answers. What else could d be? Well, it, in order for this to be 0, d could be 22. Okay, Both of these numbers are positive. They make sense in the real world. So it sounds like we have a situation where the parabola cuts through there at 0, and then it cuts through over here at 22. So the skateboarder jumped in the air and then came around right there, okay, at 22. So d is the, the distance from the takeoff ramp. Well, obviously at 0 there. He takes off, and he ends up 22 meters 
from the uh, from the ramp. That's already telling us a lot of information. We know how how far he jumped. 22 meters. That's a long, long way. I'm still wondering if this is real. I'm having some doubts. Okay. Determine his maximum height. So let's use your knowledge of the axis of symmetry. Let's find the axis of symmetry right here so that we can find out the vertex. And the vertex will help us find the maximum height. It's a lot of stuff going on here. This is probably the hardest question in this whole unit, okay? So it's no wonder. Okay, let's do this one in pink just to make it a little different. Determine the maximum height. Well, first of all, find the middle of 0 and 22. All you do is go 0 plus 22, you get 22. Divide that by 2, and you get 11. Okay, so there we go. Let's write that in. The distance between 0 and 22 at the middle is 11. So the x value up here is 11. Now, if we're supposed to find the maximum height, we're really interested in the y value. Okay, in this case, we're saying y value here, but really it's the letter h that's representing y. So all you have to do is plug your answer, the answer 11, wherever you see d. And if we do that, we will come up with how high this guy went. Okay? I've got to keep that showing there. So I'm going to go back to the yellow here, and I'm going to go, okay, h is equal to negative 0 0.05. Instead of d, I'm going to write the 11 that we just found. Whoops. The 11 that we just found. Okay? And we're going to times that, so we're going to go this times this, and then in this bracket over here, we're going to put the 11 where we see the D again, okay, minus 22. Okay, now if, again, if you forget where I'm getting all this from, it's from right over here, okay? And I am putting 11 wherever you see a D, okay? So let's do that here. I don't think... I don't think we need to see any. There we go. I made more room for ourselves. Got to like that. Okay. Um, I'm taking out my calculator here. First of all, 11 minus 22 is negative 11. Okay? That's no problem. But negative 0 0.05 times 11, I don't know what that is, so I'm going to use my calculator. Negative 0 0.05 times 11 is... Here it is, negative 0 0.55. All right? And if we multiply these two together, so multiply them together times negative 11, you get 6.05. H is 6.05. Now, what does that number mean? Well, H is the height. And we have found the maximum height, and h is in meters, okay? So this skateboarder went 6.05 meters high above the Great Wall of China. We are done this question, and that is the last example for this unit. Good for you for hanging in there. I'm serious.